Hello friends, welcome to the Anti-Chess Law channel. But today we're not going to be talking about Anti-Chess, we've actually got a special guest and that person is Jagalap. Hi Jagalap. Hello. And uh, what's special about Jagalap, even though he has played, uh, I think at least three Anti-Chess World Championships, he's not exactly known for that, um, but what he is extremely good at is Bullet. <clears throat> and 1-0 chess, so you can see uh, he's been over 2,600. And instead of going through something like every other chess video does, there's a bit of a special theme today. So, Jagalep, why don't you uh, tell us about what you're going to show us today? Oh, okay. Yes. Well, I wanted to show about an aspect of chess called arrogance. And I'm just saying that I'm not condoning this and actually you shouldn't play arrogantly, but I need to show people exactly what not to do. Like they do in the news articles where they show exactly how a burglar broke into a house a house so you know exactly what not to do. Ah, oh, that's very useful. So actually, I mean, arrogance is something that amongst the people I know has been around for a long time. We also had a great friend named Alex, uh, and he used to play arrogantly, so have a few of us. But what does that really mean to have arrogance? And I think, you know, it'll become clear probably from the first game, but it's, you know, it's not enough just to win. Um, what about sacrificing all your pieces at the end and uh, trying to flag your opponent in lost positions. Uh, just to sort of, well, what's the purpose of it, would you say? Why do you do it? <laughs> well, the origin really was back in the early 2000s when I was playing on the internet and you just sort of think, why is this person playing on? I'm winning easily in position and time and it's their right to play on. It's fine. Yeah, this is just a bit too easy. And then so part of it is the bit of the challenge. I, I wonder, <laughs> it'll make more of a game if I could just sacrifice all these pieces. I think I might just uh, be able to win in time. Yeah, that's it. I mean, when when just winning isn't enough. So why not try and win <laughs> in the most aggravating possible way to your opponent to make them feel rage and this sort of thing? I think that might be the goal of some people. Maybe not your goal, but anyway, let's jump in and let's see uh, your first game. And you're going to show us quite a few fun examples. Oh, yes. So this first one here is just your sort of simple, basic arrogance. So playing a good play, he's 2,500 in the bullet game. So I got 13 seconds and he's got 1.6 seconds. And actually, the other thing about arrogance, it can be uh, quite helpful in your game. So here, he actually has got some threats. He might play queen f7 and, and quickly uh, checkmate me. So um, just do the classic arrogance, which is just putting the queen straight on prey. <laughs> and he couldn't play the uh, the only legal move in time, king takes queen. So he lost on time. Yeah. And uh, so then, of course, the important thing, as soon as you finish a game like this, to write in good game, which is oh. part of the whole <laughs> thing. Or on Lee Chess, there's the good feature of there's an actual good game button. You could just press that and that will say good game. And the the origin of that as well was some guy on fix, you know, you'd you'd have these um these uh notes under your name, finger notes, and, and this one particular guy was saying in his notes, don't say good game if it's not a good game. So so they're about the only games that I actually say good game on. <laughs> It's not really a good game. And this this culture, sort of... I mean, this culture has been around since the 90s because I remember seeing it on Fix back in the days. And some of these best bullet or lightning players, as they were called, would play 1-0. And, and they would say a move like Queen C2, that's a good move because any, any sort of check, any sort of unexpected move that stops pre-moving is going to waste your opponent's time and that will enable you to flag. So... It's actually a good strategy, but purely, yeah, in some positions, it's unnecessary. So anyway, let's see the next one. Yeah. 
Okay, and I just wanted to say that um, usually these these games go over okay as well, but I do remember playing one guy for a few games on chess.com and I I was way up in, in time, so I just give away all my pieces near the end and he'd take them all with. He got really mad, you know, he's, he's typing all these uh, insults after I've won, saying, but you played all these terrible moves, and then we play another game. And the same thing would happen. I'd sacrifice all my pieces. And he, he's still getting furious. Oh, you're playing all these terrible moves. He, he couldn't believe I won it. We only played a few games. I thought, he doesn't seem to be catching on that I'm doing it deliberately at all. But, <laughs> but yeah, usually they don't they don't insult you like that. But it can be quite fun if, <laughs> if it leads to some um, friendly uh, Some good banter. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> um, yes, so this one here. So this is another one that shows the the pre-move aspect i'll just flip it round to show you did the bottom each time yep that's fine so you can go oh yeah okay so um yes so yeah the the pre-move aspect that rt ponty was mentioning so um yes so uh in this this position here so i got six seconds and he's got 2.1 seconds so i could quickly give away all my pieces rook takes b2 and then take on there with my queen. But these guys are quite good. He's 2,500 bullets. So he might yeah. actually take all those and yeah. then with less than two seconds, just free move his pawn all the way down for a queen and checkmate me. You it's, know, and it's, very, it's, very, it's very doable. Like two seconds is, is a lot of time really when you're pre-moving. So yeah, absolutely. It's probably going to be dangerous to give it away too early. Yep. And, but I, I like to do these uh, geometric moves. So when I'm playing, I'm trying to do geometric moves. So if I play rook takes b2, he's only got one square to go, queen from c2 to b2 to to take it. So um, so I didn't do that. So that might only take him like 0.1 of a second. So instead I make him do the longer move. So I still give the piece away, but now he has to go three squares with his queen. <laughs> So that's going yeah. to take longer. So I'm still giving away the piece for nothing. <laughs> but also, he takes a whole second to take it. So ah, now he's down to one there second. There you go. That's the And difference. that also gives me time. So now, give the queen. And now he has to get his hand all the way from the queen on C5, all the way to his king on B1 to take it. So he can't do it in point one of a second. He's going to take a bit of time. So he takes it. But now, so he might actually win. He's got point one of a second. <laughs> And but while he's doing that, that gives me time to pre-move this. So he's actually got an easy checkmate in two here. He could just take on on c7 and then play rook a1. But he lost on time. What a shame. So good game. Press on the good game. <laughs> and um, yes, so yeah. And uh, so that was also um, showing about how when they've They've got, you want them probably when you're doing these arrogance things to have at least five seconds on the clock. But yeah, two seconds or less is even better. But um, yeah, this game was one where I didn't really do the, the arrogance <laughs> too well, but it worked out okay because I think he actually did some arrogance himself. So he's a 2400 player. Um, so very good player. So I took this. And yes, so this is where I did this move. But to be honest, I think I actually just dropped the rook. <laughs> I don't think I did that purposely. But um, but anyway, so he takes it. So he's got 6.7 seconds. Yeah, it's a lot of time. The pro yeah, it's a problem with if you lose all your pieces, yeah, you've got no threats to throw in checks virtually with only pawns. So, <laughs> so they can start free moving all the moves and you can't throw in any checks. So we just sort of, played these moves pretty quickly and he got a queen and so he's now got 5.9 seconds so he's taken him less than a second after i've dropped the rook to mm. do all these moves so he could actually win this very easily and then i take this and he's gone here and i've gone here and he's so he's set up now to do a mate in one but this is where I think he's done his own form of arrogance. They sometimes do their own form. So he's got 3.7 uh. seconds, but he loses on time. And what I think's happened is some of them do it where they've got a fair bit of time. 
And so they think, oh, I'll let the time get down to 0.1 of a second before I do the checkmate. But I don't, I think with arrogance, is it's got to be classy, you know, and I don't think that's classy, particularly if they've got like 20 seconds and you let it all run down. You're just really wasting time. But I think that's what he's done. But sometimes they don't do it properly. So I imagine he's he's gone to try to do the checkmate, uh, like Queen H8 checkmate, um, with 0.1 of a second left, but he probably just got a bit too slow. He, he probably did it just after the time went. <laughs> yeah, that's sort of, I mean, time burning is just criminal. It should be just bannable, any sort of time burning. But even like arrogance time burning, it's pro it's pretty bad too. So yeah, I'm, I'm glad, uh, I'm glad that guy, uh, well, didn't get the move in. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it does actually bring up warnings that if you're letting the time waste down, um, you could get your account banned something from it but um but it's also nice to win with one pawn because that's uh oh, one the of best. the real oh yes <laughs> we if talk we about like ma maximum arrogance points where you, you you win when you've got one pawn left and then maybe you've got the lowest possible time that's uh i hope there's a couple of games like that you've got to see <laughs> that would be maximum arrogance oh uh, yeah so um Next one here. Uh, well, so this one here. Um, so this again, where it's a bit bit too easy. I've got six seconds. He's only got point four of a second. And so I think I oh, will do some arrogance here. So check. So it's a bit confusing. The white pawn's actually coming down the the board. So I'm the black player, and his white pawn is actually one square away from queening. So he comes into there. So I think, well, now the clock actually shows him as having zero, zero time. So, um, so that means he's got less than 0.1 of a second. So I think, well, we'll just finish off by giving up our last piece and, and winning with a one point. But he actually pre moves putting oh. the king there. Oh. So, <laughs> so I was a bit shocked. And that, now it's a problem because if he pre moves, Rook takes. Well, he he has two choice. He had to pre move rook takes d three or rook takes d four, and you got to choose accurately, don't you? <laughs> yes, and then I won't be able to win. I only get a draw at mm. best. So, um, yes, yeah, so I was a bit of a shock that he pre moved the right move, and I took a while to move my king. But yes, he didn't go for the long move of taking the pawn. Which he might not make in time, so he's just gone for the short move of doing the queen. He's managed to do it. Oh wow! But... He even got that in. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. And then, uh, so then I pre-moved the next move, and yes, he just um, doesn't quite make it in time, so he's lost on time. So click on the that's where you click on the good game, of course. <laughs> good game. So yeah, um, yeah. So this. Ah, uh, now the next yeah. one. I think we need to introduce something because this is a uh, blind jagalap, and. What uh, we should tell everybody is that Jagalap is one of the best blindfold players uh, probably in the world. He's probably played nearly one of the most games, for sure. And not just, you think playing blindfold, not being able to see the pieces on the board at all. So you pretty much got your mouse and you're you know, moving squares when you can't see the pieces. <clears throat> so some top players, they play blindfold, you know, maybe one hour games very slowly, they can visualize it. But of course, what Jagalurp does, oh, that's too easy. And he plays 1-0 as a blind account. And you can see this rating, you know, he's got very high rating, even playing blind. So yeah, let's uh, let's see what happens here. And then the... <laughs> There's a lot of pawns on the board, and it looks like you're in a bad position here with just your king left. How are you going to get out of this one? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I think this guy, so this is a 2100 player, so very strong, like I often get these super strong players. So he's crushing me quite badly here, but I like to keep going. It's good practice, especially when you're blindfold, to keep trying to visualize. So, um, yes, so he's actually coming down the board with the pawns, and... Here he could just make a queen to win, but now he's instituting his own form of arrogance. So he's bishoping the pawn because he wants to queen all the pawns. And again, this is a, a form of arrogance. I don't, I don't think it's particularly classy. I think it's just wasting people's time. But um, 
that's where he he wants to queen all the pawns. So he just rushes them all down. Like he's pro he's probably like nine years old or something doing this. <laughs> you know, like <laughs> yeah. But um, so he comes down and queens, and he could just do checkmate, but he wants to queen the ball. So he queens, and it's stalemate. So an <laughs> example of how um, how the arrogance can fail. <laughs> That's a good arrogance fail. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> you live by arrogance, you die by arrogance. So you know, <laughs> yeah. sometimes it's really not going to come off, and it's good to see a failure too because it's both sides of the coin here. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and when the when I'll try it, arrogance and it won't work, you'll often say something like, "Well, it had to go for it." <laughs> had to go for it, of course. You have to. <laughs> got to go for it because chess is an art. You know, you got to go for the artful, artful checkmate. Yeah. So, um, yeah, So this next one. So this is more um an arrogant success here. So. Here, um, yeah, I'm playing 2200 player, and I've got 18 seconds. He's got 21 seconds, so he's really got lots of time. But yes, so this example of how arrogance can get points. So I'm just give away my pieces and uh, give this one away. And he's got 20 seconds, but he still just quickly takes it, and it's still mad. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, and that's uh, it, maybe he thought he was playing anti chess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes, too much anti chess. But um, he also could have played Queen G one checkmate here. So he had that there, or he could have also done it uh, back after I'd moved the C knight to E six as well. So so also lucky that he didn't do the checkmate, but. You know, so sometimes arrogance, like you were saying, it, it can help you uh, win games or draw games. And um, but this was another, uh, this is another illustrative game of the advantages of arrogance. So this one here, so this guy's winning comfortably. So he's 2300 player and I got 18 seconds and he's got eight seconds. So he... Finds that right move here to check and win the rook on c1. Then he throws in check. That's fine. And then he takes this. And so now after this, he's got 3.7 seconds. So he should win this easily because he's got mates all over the board. But um, arrogance can try to save points in these guys so do the arrogant classic move so queen takes four of course <laughs> and so takes him a while to get out of that and then so another he gives check. another check 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 but after this he's still got 2.5 mm -hmm. seconds so he should do it and he's got about five mates in one he's <laughs> yep. got maybe uh he could do um Queen f3 or queen g2 or queen h2 or rook h2 or queen takes h3. But I stop all of those moves being checkmate with the arrogant rook c3. <laughs> and, and, and of course, that he, he still has um, uh, queen g1, mate, but that's the harder <laughs> mate to see. So at least you've, yeah, stopped, stopped a couple. Yes, because queen g1 wasn't mate a move earlier, so he's mm. not really expecting that to be available. And uh, so he's got a few, he's got so many winning moves that it's too confusing for him. <laughs> and so he does find this move and he's got point nine, uh, nine of a second left. And of course, the Block only one more time. Block again. Arrogant move. <laughs> yeah, so Rook there and he lost on time. So <laughs> oh. Yep. See, that's it. You sometimes you've got so many good options. You get paralyzed by choice. You're like, oh no, which <laughs> which mate do I do? And then the the time goes. So too many good moves. That's a great one. Yeah, he probably went to play one of them. Like Queen takes H three, and then thought, oh, but taking the rook is mate. Well, they're both mate, but yeah. <laughs> um, yes. So um, this one here will. I guess this is another one where I've got. I've got lots of time. Um, I've got 20 seconds. He's only got 1.5 seconds. He's 
2400 but this is this is how um it could lead to a a quicker win to do it the arrogant way so i just like the ridiculous moon queen c4 <laughs> <laughs> and because he's got 1.5 seconds left he's pre-moved to move and so now i could just do checkmate so... <laughs> <laughs> wow the reverse that was a quick reversal <laughs> Beautiful. Yes. So it actually led me to win the game uh, quicker than would have been doing virtually any other way. <laughs> oh, see? Sometimes arrogance works in your favor positionally. Good. <laughs> um, yeah. So that was Joe playing some um, higher level players. So this is playing against an IM. So he's 2,500. So I've got eight seconds. He's got 2.4 seconds. So he's coming down the board, so he pushes this. So he's about to queen to try to give checkmate. And so, uh, again, this is showing the geometry of it. I know when he's got his, his pawn on e7 that he's going to have to go a long way from there all the way to his king. So I throw in the check. So he's got to move his king out of check. And so that's got to take him a while. So he's down to 1.3. So he's still probably thinking he'll do it in time. And then got to do the arrogant move. So <laughs> <laughs> Queen G1. And so he takes it. And he's got 0.1 of a second. But of course, while he's doing that, I could just pre-move in moving the pawn. And <laughs> again, he's got, he could just queen the pawn for mate in one. Uh... But... It's but you know what? Time. This is actually a very clever thing because sometimes if you haven't got auto queen, that can take time. Now, yes. it's probably it's worse in anti chess because you can't have auto queen, right? So there's a lot of uh, opportunities for arrogance and anti where if someone's about to queen the pawn and then you know you've got you've probably bought yourself two seconds or something just because they need to select <laughs> it. So uh, that's quite interesting. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, and so this. Next one, similar. So, uh, so this guy, so this guy is strong, 2600 player. So he's got 1.1 1. 1 seconds left. I got 2.1. So I like throwing in when there's not much time, like you were saying, the unexpected move or, or possibly the most stupid move <laughs> because they totally won't expect it. So he throws in the check moves that so he's got 1.1 1. 1. so so the obvious smart thing to do would be to to move my king but i'll just throw in the silly move in, instead so i do this which just allows him to queen his pawn yeah so he pre-moves this which would have been a good move if i moved my king but now i could just take his queen <laughs> but i've only got one second myself and i like I like to do the arrogant move, so I just put my king there. You could have taken the queen, but no, nah, that's okay. <laughs> no, I, I wouldn't give my queen up. And because he's 2,600, even though he was probably just about to move a pawn, he's like, oh, I can't resist playing the good move. I've got to yep. play the good move. So he takes the queen. And again, this is the geometry of it. While he's taking that, I can throw Check. in a check on this and he's going to get his hand all the way from F7 all the way to B3 to move his king before he can um, start pre-moving all the moves to checkmate. So he couldn't, couldn't play the next move in time. So he lost on time. Beautiful. Uh, <laughs> so, um, so the next one, so now's the higher it's level game. So this is the gets GM. So, um, so he's got only 0 0.8, 0 0.8 of a second left. Um, but not surprisingly, he's winning in material. So, be tempting to go here for the the rook f8 move, but he could possibly take that and then pre move all the moves to checkmate. So, I had a bit too much respect for the GM that he might be able to do that in time. So I thought, well, I'll. I'll set up to maybe take on G6 or something with uh. my rook. And uh, he actually played a strange move here himself because he, he's only got such small time. He played this funny move. And um, I've actually pre-moved my king up here. And now he's moved the pawn here. So he's got 0.3 of a second. I'm still a bit scared to sack, sack the rook. 
as my last piece. So I just set up for a check and then he quits and now i maximize the distance he has to go so he's going to bring his hand all the way from d1 all the way to f8 to get out of check in time and couldn't make it in time so he lost on time here we better be careful not to get flagged there's a one minute one and a half minutes left of the call so uh we've got to be quick oh okay maybe time for one more and then we can oh, then, we, okay. then we'll have to arrogant zoom <laughs> So. <laughs> oh, no. oh, okay. Oh, too slow. So this is, uh, I think this is GM Joe Gallagher. So he's got nine seconds. So um, he, he's winning. And I could just draw this easily. But I've got to go for the win. So of course you this. have to. <laughs> and he pins. I was actually going for Queen F7, mate. But he pins it. So now I repeat a few moves. Then I think, oh, I've got to go. I've got to go for the win. So two seconds arrogance the rook and now i can't take the rook because he might pre-move taking it or i can't leave it where it is he might pre-move taking it with his rook so play that move <laughs> and that's a really good arrogance because he he uh would need to uh he has a made him one if he takes it but he uh too he slow, too slow. Uh, yeah that's awesome anyway we're gonna be out of time we flagged so thanks <laughs> thanks jaggler that was great lesson in arrogance I hope everyone enjoyed it, and uh, I'll see everybody in the next video. Thanks, Thanks for coming, Jagalit. That's all right.